Katie wears many hats. Mom, teacher, radio host, wife, and weather lady. It is a rainy day here in southwest Louisiana. Now back to the show. Welcome back. Happy Halloween. So excited to have you with us this afternoon. And every now and then I get an an email from somebody who's listened to the show. I'm not super great about replying to them, but this particular email stood out because Vincent Lococo reached out to me, Chip, as he's called by his friends and family, and said, hey, you were talking about this this guy named Father Peter Gumpel. I actually happen to know him, and he's here to tell us the story of how he got to know Father Peter Gumpel and the book that he wrote that Father Gumpel both endorsed and contributed to. So Chip Lococo, welcome to the Katie McGrady Show. Thank you very much for having me, Katie. So, so tell us. I had, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. Launch into so, it. <laughs> so I had written a novel called Saving the Music, which which is a story about Jewish musicians who were hidden in Sicily during World War II. And a gentleman by the name of Gary Krupp, who is a Jewish guy who heads up an organization called Pave the Way Foundation, who's been very instrumental in getting the true facts about the pontificate of Pope Pius XII out to the public in lieu of some of the disinformation He had read an early draft of the novel, and he said, you know, Chip, you really need to send this to Father Peter Gumpel. And I had no idea who Father Peter Gumpel was, but he said you need to send it to him as he's working or has been working on the cause of beatification for Pope Pius XII. And he's such a huge historian on the subject. I think you need to send it to him and let him read it. So I wrote to Father Peter in Rome, and um, I got a phone call from him um, first off. He, wrote, he called me first. And the first two things he related to me were two, two tidbits of information. One was he said that the Palatine Guard, which was the organization, unlike the Swiss Guard, the Palatine Guard is strictly formed by the Pope himself. At the beginning of the war, the Palatine Guard consisted of 200 members. By 1943, the Palatine Guard had grown to 4,000 members, with many of them being Jewish, as mm. the Pope was hiding them within the organization itself. Oh, wow. The other, thing he, the other thing he told me, which was fascinating, and this is around the time frame of 1943. Germany has invaded Italy now because Italy has switched sides. The Vatican is cut off, surrounded by the Nazis. There was oral testimony for many years by both Catholic priests and nuns that the Pope had issued orders to all religious houses, properties, seminaries, and convents to open their doors and hide the Jews. Mm. This order has been denied by many historians over the years because they said there's no written order signed by the, by the Pope. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget the way that Pope, the, the way that Father Gumpel told me was, of course, this is nonsense. <laughs> there, would be no, there would be no such writing because they would be so afraid that, be tur- that if ever they got caught, and we right. then have something by the Vatican. Many years later, Father Gumpel was able to find a note in the cloistered convent of Santo Quattro Cordonati, which is a convent located in Rome behind the Colosseum. It was a note written by one of the nuns who lived there who stated that they had opened their doors in accordance with the Pope's order and had hid 24 Jews within their cloistered convent. Wow. And in today's world, when you think about it, you know, we don't think much about cloistered comments, I guess. But back then, that was quite an undertaking for a cloistered comment to open their doors to men, women and children to take them in. Yeah. Father Peter then wrote to me after he read the novel. He then wrote to me and gave me about eight pages of painstaking notes <laughs> um, helping me like this was wrong or, this, you know, the Pope would never say it this way. Or, you know, it, it, was, it was he was a fascinating, fascinating man. I love that there's a personal connection to this and I, I love that you reached out to me you know I, I shared that story and I, I have to tell you later that day my sister happened to be listening to the show that day and she said look Katie you, I like your radio show but that was like kind of convoluted and boring and I was like well I was just working off this one article that I thought was really fascinating and then you emailed me like that evening and I'm sitting at dinner with my family and I showed her and I was like see somebody thought it was interesting somebody that actually knew the guy I mean what what was father you 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 corresponded back and with him he he endorsed the book saving the music which i've i've been thoroughly enjoying thank you for sending me a copy what was it like to really be exchanging letters with a living history essentially this man who escaped who was part of the german royal family what was that like for you 
Well, and I got to be honest with you, I did not know the the secret history of his life, right? I've come to find out that other historians who I was working with on my book were aware of it because he had told them. Yeah. But I, I was unaware of it. So I was as flabbergasted by you as the story when I saw it in America Magazine. <laughs> yeah. I did not know about his history, that he was a member of the Hollenzon family, probably the last um, remnant of that family, uh, the sole heir of the family, to give it all up to become a Jesuit priest is, is just a, it's a fascinating story. But like I said, I, in talking to other people involved in, in helping me with my book, it kept coming back to Father Peter, and everyone would just say about how you know, he was the one man who looked at all the documents mm-hmm. of the of Pope Pius XII pontificate when he was studying whether or not he should be, um, you know, a possible saint. And he really came away with the opinion that the Pope did the right thing in the way that he handled the whole situation. You know, that he he felt like he could not speak or or speak out against the persecutions too loudly because he was afraid that it would uh, not only, it wouldn't save save a single life, but that on top of that, it would affect the secret activities that they were doing all across the Vatican properties. Yeah. It's such a cool, it's such a cool connection, such a cool story. So, so Chip, tell us where folks can grab a copy of Saving the Music and follow you and your writings. Sure. You can go to Amazon.com and just, you know, if you look up Lococo, um, you'll find all my novels. Or you can look up Saving the Music on Amazon or in Bone, Barnes & Noble. Um, my website is www.vincentlococo, and it's L-O-C-O-C-O dot com. I have to ask, are you uh, are you related to the Wisconsin Lococos? You know, I don't think so. We all, <laughs> my entire Lococo clan came here right from Palermo, Sicily. My family's from Cefalu, Sicily. They came right oh, from, wow. from Sicily, Sicily to New Orleans and um, set up shop here in New Orleans. So, I love uh, it. Well, one, one father noted about Father Peter is that Father Peter went to Gregorian University in Rome. Yeah. And my father was actually in the seminary and went to Gregorian University in Rome as well. Wow. Um, That's cool. And was there... And was there in 1958 when Pope Pius XII died, and my dad was asked to come sit vigil with the body of Pope Pius XII at the Castel Gandolfo the night before the funeral. So I thought it was yeah. kind of neat. Oh, but, that is so cool. You know. Man, man, such cool connections. Chip, thanks so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You can go to his website, like you said, vincentlacoco.com. It really is. I've, I've not been able to put it down. I kept my husband up the other night because I was reading it for so long. Saving the Music by Vincent B. Shiplacoco. We're going to take a quick break and then come on back. It'll be time to dive into the history of Halloween. So stick around for more of the Katie McGrady Show here on the Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129. Listening to the Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129. 